So I'm Justin Jerkowski. I'm in charge of the geospatial division over here at Carroll Engineering. And um, the goal here today is to try to explain to you why laser scanning would be beneficial to you and why laser scanning is superior to conventional surveying, not only in, in the ways in which data is collected and the speed and accuracy in which it's collected, but also how much it could save you and how much it could ease your mind um, knowing that you got a solid product um, behind you. Um, so through this table of contents, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go through many other things too, um, but just as a base, uh, what is 3D laser scanning? So we, so we wanna inform you what this is and we wanna also inform you that just because this technology is so superior and is expensive, we don't want clients to feel like that cost is gonna be put on them, okay? So this cost was um, spent on Carroll Engineering for in-house so we could service our clients in the best way possible. Uh, we wanna give them accurate information and give it to them in a timely manner. Uh, that is our goal. So our goal isn't to try to make money back um, for overcharging, our, our goal is to get return clients. And you do that by servicing them well and giving them information that they could hang their hat on. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna toggle my, uh, it was nice seeing you all, but I'm gonna shut my screen off right now as I present and we'll start going through the slides. Okay, so what is laser scanning? It's a device used to analyze a real world or object or environment to collect data. It could be used for reverse engineering. Uh, it gives you the ability to construct digital 3D dimensional models and cr creates a point cloud of a geometric sample of the earth surface or of a particular subject. Um, 3D laser scans involve much more advanced technology than they did back in the 1960s when it, it first came out. Uh, present day laser scanning procedures use laser beams, advanced sensors, global positioning systems, AKA GPS, uh, inertial measurement units or IMUs, receiver electronics and photo detectors. Using all these components, the scanner could calculate accurate coordinates and surfaces of structures. First, laser scanning systems threw out light waves that bounced off of surfaces and reflect back to the sensor. The sensor then calculates how far away the scanner is and the surface is by measuring the time it takes for the light beam to travel to the surface or to the subject and back to the scanner itself. The process is known as time of flight measurement. The distance measured and then used to calculate coordinates for the tiny section of the surface hit by the laser beam. All this happens in just a matter of seconds during a single scan and the scanner will collect millions of 3D coordinates. When the point clouds from the laser scans are processed, they form a digital representation of the scan surfaces, demonstrating the dimensions and spatial relationships of topographical features and structures the return on investment. So why, you know, we, we've all been using regular conventional surveying practices for a long time, and we've been getting the job done this whole time. Um, you know, why, why change, right? Why, why, why change something that already works? Well, it's superior. Um, and there's nothing that matches the productivity and efficiency that a laser scanner could bring. Um, reduced time in the field is just drastically reduced. Um, I, on average, you probably have roughly 35 to 40% less time spent collecting data in the field um, and about roughly 15 to 30% savings um, generally on a project. There's, there's less setups, um, it, it, it collects uh, 
features at a rapid rate and um, that would take a, a conventional surveyor weeks to do you know you can now do in hours by just setting up this scanner um, it has the ability to reach inaccessible places or objects such as you know elevator shafts or you know inside a storm structure or it or a dangerous construction site. Um, you know, one of the main advantages of uh, remote sensing technology, such as LIDAR systems, which, which are point clouds and laser scanners, is that just a few members of the staff could operate them. They could be mounted on tripods or moving vehicles, such as cars, trains, planes, and drones. Therefore, construction surveys could be carried out with fewer people on site. And this is particularly beneficial when surveying sites that may be unsafe, uh, structurally unsound, or highly trafficked. Organizations can reduce health and safety risks by reducing the number of people exposed to these hazards. You could also eliminate site return trips, and site return trips uh, have a cost that the cost of rework often accounts for five percent or more of total construction projects, which for larger projects can total in many thousands and even millions of dollars. There's there's no more bad shots, there's no more redos, there's no more, oh, we forgot to locate this, or the client didn't know he needed this, and now we have to go back, and it's your, your, your firm is put in a position where you're either eating that cost to service your client, or you're going back for an additional work authorization to the client to say, hey, you know, you never told us we needed this, so we have to return, wasn't in the proposal, but we have that now, you know? If, if we missed it in the field conventionally, you'd have to return back, whereas, you know, when you're capturing the whole site at once, everything's right at your fingertips. You can literally survey from your screen inside and we'll get to that more later. Um, and in road surveying and traffic construction, I mean, uh, developing highways is one of the most challenging tasks for authorities as they can't stop traffic for too long to gather information about existing roads, but they can't delay construction work either. Laser scanners help reduce turnaround time for road surveys and traffic construction analysis from weeks to a matter of hours. For instance, I mean, I surveyed in the field for 10 years and you know when you're doing cross sections on a major highway you know it could take you all day to to locate 600 feet of a major highway but you know in that same day you could probably do 3000 feet with a laser scanner and without missing anything Why is 3D laser scanning superior to conventional ground surveying? You know, we touched on it a little bit, but it rapid, rapidly and accurately collects data at infinitesimal levels, you know, which once took weeks, now takes hours. Dramatically reduce health and safety risks, collects data in areas once inaccessible to surveyors, unsafe sites and structures, vulnerable historic sites. There's some sites where, you know, they, they don't want people disturbing the area. And in this case, you wouldn't even have to step foot in the grounds and you could survey from afar. Um, and again, the 20, 10 to 20 savings uh, per project, which you know is actually 15 to 30, as I referenced on my other slide, um, after doing some, uh, doing some real research and uh, talking to some of my contacts and uh, you know, everybody came around the same number and I agreed and it was about 15 to 30 percent. So that's that's an edit that uh, was just forgotten about. So apologies there. So what is point cloud data? So when we set up the, the laser scanner out in the field, it's we're hit and go, right? We're telling it to scan this area. You can window an area. Otherwise, you could just scan 360. And what we're doing is creating a digital twin of the survey environment. You know, it actually brings you there and it brings the site onto your computer screen where you could then survey from the screen. And once processed and registered or stitched together like a puzzle, um, 
it turns into a 3D digital model. And these coordinates or points appear as pixels on your screen, not unlike a television at all. Um, if you, you know, some of the older televisions where you could, you know, look real close and you could actually see the pixels, um, that's how it appears on my screen. And I could show you, and I will show you a few pictures and videos. I could tell you that the, it doesn't do it justice. It looks way better on my screen, but the way technology is, um, it, it could only look so good. And we'll get there. And I think you'll be impressed by some of the images we have. Um, each of these pixels that comes up on the screen, it, it, it forms the overall picture of the site. Like I said, it brings you to the site. But the biggest thing is each one of these small little pixels populated in the millions has its own X, Y, and Z coordinate value. Okay. So here's a little video. I, I wanted to kind of demonstrate um, colors to you because you're going to be seeing a lot of pictures. You're not going to know what you're looking at or what the difference is, what the colors mean. So this is just the standard intensity setting. And you could um, toggle colored scan, real world imagery, or black and white. And this video was just to demonstrate that. So you can see me, I'm going up there, I'm changing it to the real world. So right now you can see all these stones and the water going underneath the bridge. And I'll go back again just to show you how easy it is. You can see the different colors, all the different rocks and you know things in the background. And um, it's a way of looking at things from a different perspective. I could change the angles on some of these things, you know, flip it to the side, uh, really isolate certain areas and zoom in so I could, you know, you know, really go into the weeds and on how this thing is built and the shape that it is. And, you know, you could provide an engineer anything he would want to know about this. You know, if I zoomed in to one of these rocks right here, even the smallest pebble here would have at least you know, 15 to 20 coordinate values on it, you know, the small pebble. Um, it's pretty crazy stuff that we're able to do now. And it doesn't take that long. This doesn't take that long. This this image that you see right here was done in 30 minutes in the field. So it's a half an hour. And then in the office, you know, tell me what you need. You're the engineer. I could give you whatever you need. How long is that going to take me to do? you know, another half hour, you know, or so. I mean, of course there's travel to the site and expenses and this and that, but you're really dramatically reducing the time that's needed in the field. Justin? Yes. Uh, someone has asked, what do the colors indicate in the default mode? So it's just a, it's just a different way to look at it. Um, so let me pause this real quick. It's just a different way to look at it. Um, the colors reflect differently off different materials. So you can then distinguish what material you're looking at. You could tell the difference between asphalt pavement and concrete or uh, uh, a wire fence versus a PV, PVC fence or you know anything like that. It, it helps distinguish colors or distinguish materials basically in the scan. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay, and what, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more. So 3D laser scanning, survey technician. So what does it take to do this, right? And just like anything else, it's practice. Um, you know, they're teaching some of this stuff in school now um, at NGIT and, uh, you know, they're. There's classes, Leica has classes. Um, for me personally, uh, there's a gentleman named Bruce Marquis, excuse me, of Leica, and he was very helpful and um, basically showed me everything I needed to know as a refresh, because I came to Carol with some uh, you know, previous knowledge of all this stuff. But uh, you know, I got to 
train with him again. And, um, you know, it kind of all comes back to you and he taught me new things and it's just, it's practice and it, it takes some practice getting used to, and then it just takes that person showing somebody else the ropes, you know, and, uh, understanding how these things are done in the field and, um, to be able to direct field crew, which we'll get into that later. But you also need the ability to read sketches, plans, blueprints, which is, you know, standard surveying thing. Um, there's CAD software experience. Um, you could you could attain certifications, um, you know, which which definitely definitely help if you could provide to a municipality um, so they could be assured that they have people responsible in the project that should be in charge of the project. Here at Carroll, we have uh, 25 years of combined experience um, with laser scanning, that's indoor and outdoor. And uh, I scanned, on, scanned um, in the field for several years before coming and learning the software in the office. And that always helps get a better understanding of what's going on and if something went wrong, you would know how to fix it and, you know, to achieve the product that you're, you're willing to stamp your name on and, and give to your client. Okay, so we're going to talk about 3D laser scanner applications. Um, just I have a list over here of, you know, water, wastewater management and inspections, stormwater management and inspections, the bridges inspection, construction phases to make sure everything's going up as it's supposed to, um, traffic and transportation, road surveying and traffic construction analysis, DOT surveys. Um, then under the surveying, we have floor levelness, um, which is what you see on the right here. I'll go into that. Uh, column building and structure deviation plans, just to make sure. I've done a few scans in the past in, in the city, in Manhattan, actually, um, that their columns weren't going up straight. So we brought the, they, they wanted to check it because it looked off to them. And if it looks off by sight, then it probably is. So we went out there and laser scanned it and we were to, you know, show them where the deviations were occurring so they could minimize the amount of cost to, to fix this building that was going up. Justin, um, yes, we're still looking at the bridge. Are you? Oh, because I paused it. I you forgot to unpause. Yep. Okay, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Okay, so what we're seeing over here on the right is a is a tin surface, basically. And this was done in my Leica Cyclone program. I did this in a matter of seconds, if you believe that. This is a two inch by two inch grid on a concrete floor of a, a second story building that's gonna be a, a senior living facility. And we'll show you more of that later. But I just wanted to show you guys how, how this surface is interpolating. And the colors here indicate dips in the floor. They indicate deviations and elevations. So wherever you see a yellow or green or a different color, that's areas where it's either dipping or mounding. And, you know, if you, if you know anything about um, floor levelness with concrete and uh, it needs to be flat. Um, otherwise, they'll have a tough time putting the floor down because you know the tile, if you have uh, 12 inch by 12 inch tiles and the floor's dipping and mounting like that, they will crack eventually. Moving on. Okay, so what other applications? We have volume calculations, you do regular boundary surveys that you would typically do conventional, uh, building facade surveys, tunnel bridge dam inspections, and other as-built surveys, interior pipe and wire network locations, accident investigation or forensic surveying, overhead wire, tunnel bridge clearance, uh, urban topography for town planning, um, 
you know, and areas are no longer inaccessible. As you see on the right, we could invert the scanner down into the manhole structure to perform inspections. This is, and then on the on the right side of that is an actual point cloud photo. Um, this is not a picture. This is a point cloud photo where each pixel has an X, Y, and Z coordinate. Uh, not only can you see that that's a PVC pipe inside the concrete, but you could also get a direct measurement to know exactly um, how large it is. Looks like an eight inch to me right now. Um, and then up above it, looks like we have a four inch coming out. Um, but you could inspect the entire interior of the structure and also determine the water flow. If you look at this green PVC pipe at the bottom, you could see the, a dark area. Now, that's the water. So, you know, you could tell the water's flowing correctly out of that. The top one, we don't, we don't see anything and don't know what's going on there, but um, it, it just really, you know, when, they, when the inspectors put their cameras down in there to do that, we're eliminating the need for inspectors, essentially. We could do it all ourselves. Not only could we do it ourselves, we could model the whole pipe network, um, tell you exactly what size everything is in, what shape, material, uh, flow rate. Uh, we could do all that ourselves in-house using a laser scanner and these inverted legs. And at the same time, we could take high resolution HDR photos of inside and so you could have photo documentation as well and not just rely on the, the 3D point cloud that I have on my end that you're unable to maybe open. You know, we could send the images to provide assurance that what we're saying is correct. So laser scanner, this is what it looks like. This is actually what the laser scanner that Carol has looks like on her right. It's a P40 model. Um, you know, it's one of the it's one of the best uh, laser scanners that Leica has to offer, and um, it has long range capabilities, uh, very long range. Uh, you could uh, change the density on the scanner to uh, to to shoot farther, to locate farther structures, or and that that. Cranking up the intensity makes the scans longer and it takes a little bit more time. So it's always important at the beginning of a project to understand what the client actually wants and needs. You know, if if they wanted to study the cracks in a foundation to see if they're expanding, then maybe you want to crank the density up a lot and move it a little bit closer. Um, or if you're doing overhead wire clean, clearance surveys and the wires are very high up or maybe a little farther away, then again, you wanna crank the intensity up. Um, then you could also window it and, and just scan intensity on that window so you're not running through a whole 360 to uh, create a longer time. Okay, so the software. So, the main software I use is Leica Cyclone and Leica Cloudworks. Um, Leica Cyclone is great, and um, it's it's the best software that's out there. And um, this is where all my work is done. Um, and you'll see some videos um, in a bit, but this project makes running through laser scan projects easy. Um, if I had a 3,000 feet stretch of road, I could create a surface on that area in under five minutes, whereas it takes way longer than that in Civil 3D. I could, I could create a tin of the whole site in a very short period of time with just a little bit of cleanup. Um, so projects run much faster and much smoother in Cyclone, but it does take some work to understand the program and how it wants you to perform certain tasks. And once you get the hang of it, you zip through it. Um, but it, it is a learning curve and it takes some time. 
However, Leica Cloudworks runs over top of AutoCAD. So you could bring the point cloud into regular civil 3D and do the whole survey through Cloudworks. You could look at it top down um, and trace uh, all the features. You could still grab elevations from the pixels that are in there and you know you could see where everything is you could see where the overhead wires are you could flip your ucs so you're looking at it like you're like you're there looking at it straight on in the real world view um, but we'll get into some of that later okay pre-scan procedures just get into it quickly uh what i would do um when i'm cooking up a proposal or or are trying to provide field instruction. Um, I would review sketches of the property or Google Earth imagery of the property. I basically look at it and say, okay, we would need a scan here. We would need a scan here. And I mark it up with you know red dots or whatever. And then I determine, okay, we probably need some targets over here, some targets over there. Uh, what are the preset settings how are we scanning with photos you know what kind of resolution do we need and that's all determined by the type of project and just real quickly what i meant by target selection so these scans are stitched together there's multiple ways to skin this cat you could do it by using targets which means that from one scan you would shoot three targets we'll say and then from the next scan you would have to shoot at least two targets from the previous scan and you piggyback around like that until you're finished however you could always match up like features from scan to scan and stitch it together that way i know that's a little complicated to understand but didn't really want to get into the weeds of how that stuff works um if you guys have any additional questions, obviously you can ask them at the end or you could email me anytime. Um, this was a project we did to determine the overhead wire line, uh, the overhead wire clearance on this road. And I'm just showing you the difference between the black and white imagery and the, the RGB value color imagery on the bottom. Uh, it, it just gives you a different way of looking at things and um, you know, sometimes a little easier on the eyes when you're looking at all these bright colors all day. Okay, so we we just went by and we did some scans in the steel stacks and uh, just cause it's a, you know, popular place in Pennsylvania. So, uh, and I thought it would be cool. So we we just uh, went by and did some scanning over here. And this is the, the main sign out front. And then this is just an up close uh, point cloud of this sign. I mean, you could you could kind of see where it's sparse in some places where the pixels stand out a little bit more, but where you see that it's all solid, it, I mean, there's really just, I, it would take you forever to count all the X, Y, Z coordinates that are just on the stacks writing here. Uh, let's go to the next one. So, you know, Look at, I, it still, it still shocks me sometimes at how, how good this stuff like looks. So, you know, this looks like a photograph um, and it is not, it's a point cloud. Um, it's just incredible what it could do. You can see the stage um, over on the right, um, you know, the steel stacks in the background, they have these concrete benches here, the sidewalk and guide rail and the road. I mean, it's just very obvious what you're looking at. And this is the PPL center across the street. And, uh, you know, I mean, to just look at this is pretty incredible stuff here. Um, it, 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 just showing you what this technology can do here. Um, and then that transfers for things like underground utility mark out right is there any doubt that this is an underground electric line going to this manhole that you could read what it says on the manhole um it's incredible stuff see this is a an example of a ada ramp detail now this is uh this is bergen county new jersey um they're 
notoriously tough um, on um, the as builds to their sites and their ADA compliance. And you know, if it's off a little bit, they'll ask you to rip it up. And oftentimes, it's hard to get enough samples. You know, you don't want to fail somebody just because you know of a bad shot or maybe maybe his rod when you're conventional surveying maybe that rod got stuck into like a crevice or maybe it was on top of a little piece of stone in the concrete all these things could fail an ADA ramp so when you have 3D point cloud imagery and you're able to blanketly cover the whole area you have virtually unlimited amount of data here and you could be sure that if you fail um, something that you are right. Um, and, you know, that's tremendously important to me because you don't want to, you don't want to fail your client, but, you know, you have to sometimes, and, and if you're going to fail them, you need to be right. Um, so this is a way to know that you are definitely right. I mean, there's really no way to screw this thing up, to be honest. Uh, so this is a, this is a tool called Virtual Surveyor inside of my Leica Cyclone uh, app, and uh, it's tremendous. It's just tremendous. Let's move on to a different project example. This was the floor levelness that we saw in the beginning, and these are just some pictures of, uh, you know, one of the site bosses instructing one of my guys, and. Uh, you know, telling them, oh, we think it's dipping over here, might be mounting a little bit over here. Um, so we went on site to figure out what was going on and we told them, hey, I mean, we'll scan it. You know, there's there's no way we'll be wrong if we scan it, you know, we'll, we, we don't have to carefully choose the shots and shoot in a grid. It would have took forever to shoot in a two tenth grid. He would have been there for weeks. Um, but what we did, is this so we laser scanned the the second floor and it took about two hours and i did this in another three hours and was able to send to the client and then i have this legend here and this is all elevation view so this blue that you see over to the left or to the right that means that they're high spots and uh, the red colors, the darker colors, are the low spots. Um, so as you can see, this failed. This was not a good concrete pour. Um, and the client was very pleased with us. Um, they acquired new folks uh, for the next floor that we did for them. And then down in the middle here, there's just a small point cloud image of the entire site. And you could actually see that the that the crane was going around in circles while we while we took multiple scans because it's in different locations, so it just looks like it's spinning around. And then up next, we have this little video, and this is the same job. And I just tried to do the best I can to zoom in to show you how small these pixels get. And mind you. Each one of these pixels has an X, Y, and Z coordinate value. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Right now, we're looking at an area that's probably an inch by an inch, and it's got all of these little pixels coordinates on it. And like I said, you, you can't be wrong because all of these pixels came from different scans and it tells me the error when I put all these scans together. So I know the relative error. I know that all these scans all say that it's 5.13 in this area. So I know that I'm good and I'm giving my, my client sound data. Let's continue. Okay. So here, this is a vehicular and pedestrian bridge. And again, this is point cloud imagery. You can see the stones and the water running under the bridge. You can make out specific details and the creases in the bridge. You know, you can see the detail in these, these blocks over here, you know, and it, 
this is the this is the tough thing sometimes for surveyors to locate because the the bottom part you know surveyors shoot like bottom wall and top of wall but the bottom wall face is different than the top of wall face so which one do you locate well now we have bolts so if they want to if they want the face of the wall at the bottom, we can give them that. If they want the face of the wall at the top, we can give them that. We can give them the clearances of, of you know, these bridges. Um, you know, virtually endless data. And here we got a little video. It's a little, it's a little blocky just because of the technology here. <laughs> on the TV, but I could actually fly through these point clouds. It's skipping around a little bit. I apologize for that, but let's see, come on. So on my screen, this was a nice smooth flight and uh, it kind of got a little, it's, it's the video is still going. So I, I apologize here. Um, we'll, we'll just move on. I think we get the point, uh, but I flew underneath the bridge so you could see the you know, skipped right to the end there. So I apologize about that. Okay, this is a covered bridge that was right next to the bridge we were um, just looking at. And as you can see, the, the colors, you can see the, the brown bark of the tree, the green leaves, uh, the, the signs are a little pixelated because of the, the how the images are on the computer, but you could read these clear as day in my uh, program. And this next one here, this video is trying to show you that you could isolate objects to just see what you want to see. Now, right now we're looking at a whole bunch of trees. You can't tell what's going on here. So if I go in and I pick the fence tool and I click four corners and I right click and say, copy fence to new model space. Well, now I've isolated what I want to look at. And now I don't have to be worried or bothered about all those trees and everything else that was in the way and screwing you up. And then the final product is something like this. So now I'm only looking at this and it's much more easy to navigate through. 